What does an Air Force veteran and a Navy veteran want a former professional WCW wrestler and the other a 20-year business owner have in common? They're a dynamic real estate duo. Now, here's your next episode of the Bortz Real Estate Team Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Bortz Real Estate Team Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Bortz. And I'm Chuck Bortz. If this is your first time tuning into our podcast, please check out our past episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Blurberry, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. You can also subscribe to our podcast and our blog so you'll never miss a single new episode or posting by visiting our website, BortzRealEstateTeam.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook at Bortz Team Real Estate Agents, on Instagram, the Bortz Team underscore Realtor, and on Twitter at Bortz Team hyphen Realtor. So, a lot's happening locally with the holidays fast approaching. Yes, so much so that in a recent trip to the VA in Ocala, I saw them putting up Christmas lights and decorations already in downtown Ocala. They always do such a nice job. I posted a quick video of that on our social media and people reacted very well. So I guess everyone is already ready for the holidays. And on a non-holiday note, they have begun the expansion of US-41 in Dinellan. With the new public's opening and the sales of commercial lots along that route, it will be a blessing that the city has been proactive instead of reactive to the area's growth for future traffic. Right. And for the residents of Dinellan who live in the Rainbow Springs Country Club, and the Rainbow Springs area, the much-anticipated reopening of the clubhouse and all the new amenities appears to be on track for January 1st of 2019. You know, it's going to be a real plus for those residents because they will now be able to attract more buyers to their subdivisions by finally having some real amenities to show for their annual homeowners and property association fees. That's very true. They're about three months into the project, and from what we've been told, they will have more than just cosmetic touch-ups like painting and new flooring. In fact, the new clubhouse will have a new sound system in the upstairs ballroom. The pool will be refinished. Residents will be able to enjoy tennis, walking and biking trails, bocce balls, disc golf, horseshoe pits, and they're going to even have a one-half court basketball court and more. And plus, they still have their own private access to the Rainbow River, picnic pavilions, and private beach area. It's really a win-win for everyone and all for only $230 a year. That's great. So we're going to be sure to attend the grand reopening ceremonies and we're going to have pictures and more for our listeners on our blog and also on our social media accounts. So be sure to follow us online. And again, you can find all our social media information on our website at boardsrealestateteam.com. So what's today's show about, Chuck? Well, let's see if our listeners can guess. Here's a question for everyone. Suppose you're buying a new home and you have a choice between two identical homes. One is located close to the center of the community and the other backs up to a potentially busy street. Which one would you buy? Ooh, I already know the answer, but we're going to wait to see if our listeners got it right at the end of the show. (laughs) Because after listening to today's podcast, the answers will be crystal clear. Today, we will be discussing that age-old adage we always hear about real estate, location, location, location. You know, since moving here from South Florida area, we've seen a lot of properties built in locations that people in bigger cities just would avoid. At first, we thought it was odd and it didn't seem to really matter to buyers. But now with the city's growth and buyers being more discerning of the location of their properties, we are starting to see a real concern for the location of your home when it's time to sell. That's very true. Many people don't even think about the future resale of their home when they purchase, but it's important that buyers do that. Remember that even though this is your home and it fits the needs of your family today, there will come a time when you will resell the home and at the end of the day, your home is a financial investment and one that you hope to capitalize on when you are ready to sell. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, US 41 is being expanded And for the people who live with any part of their property adjacent to or backing up to, it's starting to be a problem. Nine years ago, when we purchased our land here and we built our home, there was hardly any traffic on US-41. Fast forward to now, 
It's vastly a different story. That is so true. In fact, if you remember, ironically, back then when we were building the home, we would drive back and forth from South Florida to check on the construction. And on one of the trips, I actually shot a video driving north on 41 from about Pennsylvania Avenue up through Morriston area. And there was barely any traffic. Yeah. Now that has changed so much with the publics and the increase in the local residential population. The traffic has increased exponentially. In fact, where you could once not even hear the noise on US 41 from your home, you can now. We have a listing in the Rainbow Springs Country Club currently that backs up to US 41. And that has been a major reason for every buyer and their agent who has shown this property for not putting forth an offer. I know. And this is a really well-maintained home. I mean, don't get me wrong. We are going to sell it. But this is a home that someone has put... Um, all new updated kitchen appliances. They're also even on an acre, which there's not very many properties in the Rainbow Springs Country Club on that much land. But it's a subject we believe needs to be discussed with the changes that are happening locally and to any population where you're going to have growth. This problem is not just for our listing and our seller, but for every homeowner who purchased a home in what is termed as an undesirable location with such a close proximity to US 41 or any major road where wherever you may live. The expansion of that road will surely bring with it more noise and traffic and further diminish its desirability, any property that eventually goes for sale near there. Right. That's not to say that those homes will never sell, but the resale value will be lower than an interior property or one that is further away from US 41 or any major road and that is not subject to the road issue. In real estate, this is called economic obsolescence. This is not the same as depreciation, nor physical deterioration, or even functional obsolescence. Economic obsolescence occurs when a property loses value due to the external factors, such as local traffic pattern changes, construction of a public nuisance property, such as a jail or sewage plant, etc. In this case, with US-41, it's obviously the road and the traffic issue. And these type issues cannot be rectified by the homeowner, as in you can't pick up your property and move it. Right. That's correct. So the property becomes undesirable due to its location. Hence, location, location, location. 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 So, Chuck, what does a homeowner who is looking to sell a property with economic obsolescence do? Well, they call the board's team. (laughs) (laughs) Well, besides that, what should they do? Well, let's go back to the beginning uh, when you were looking for the home, okay. whenever we work with a buyer and we're starting to identify properties for that buyer, such as their desires, their needs, their price range, we always tell them to enter each one of the properties that we provide for them into Google Earth so that they can see what's around that property. That's the first factor in identifying a property's location to see if it will meet their standard of location. And that's true, Chuck. You always do that. And that's a great idea. And even when people are on Zillow or looking on their home before they contact us or their agent, that's a really good way to weed out what properties you may not want and therefore cut down on the amount of properties you're seeing that at the end of the day, you wouldn't have wanted anyway. Right. That's not to say that every buyer will care about the traffic noise. There are people who just don't care. But sellers have to know that they will be on the market much, much longer than a similar home in a location without these issues. Okay. But what about homeowners that are already in their home, Chuck? You know, people who are there already with this problem, like our current clients um, that are abutting 41 or other local residents, or even a 121 in Dinellon or other locations in Ocala and the surrounding areas. What, what, What about them? Well, then it comes down to them understanding that pricing their home is going to be the key. Uh, then they'll have to fully accept that they will not command the same price as another home in a more preferable location. Right. Okay. Many home buyers fail to remember that slogan, location, 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 when they were trying to find the property that will be a great investment. So they will more than likely sit on the market longer and their offers will subsequently be lower. Yes. The physical structure depreciates over time. And it's the land that appreciates in value. Many home buyers fail to remember the slogan, location, 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 when they're trying to find the property that will be a great investment. So they will more than likely sit on the market longer and their offers will probably be lower. 
The physical structure depreciates over time. It is the land that appreciates in value. It's important that home buyers understand the drivers of value and put less concentration on functionality and accommodation because it is an investment and you want it to maximize wealth. Very well put. Property prices are a function of local supply and demand, the appearance of the home, functionality and maintenance of the physical structure, but it's the location of the land that will bring the most appreciation. So people can buy the right home in the wrong location. Right. You can change the structure, you can remodel it, et cetera, as Dan was talking about, but you cannot move it because it's attached to the land. So for instance, that is why a cul-de-sac are usually in higher demand than houses on a frequently used roadways due to their traffic constraints. That's correct. When it comes to buying a home, the most desirable locations will be the highest home values, and they're going to be found in prime spots like areas with top-rated school districts, homes that abut oceans, rivers, lakes, and parks, homes with scenic views like mountains, etc., and homes that are convenient to shopping and entertainment. And then, of course, there are factors such as public transportation, the economic stability of that neighborhood, healthcare, and jobs. Right. But we want to highlight the undesirable locations first. Those would be homes that are in a commercial or industrial area, like homes next to gas stations, behind shopping centers, where there's a high noise factor with trucks idling or accepting night deliveries. And boy, oh boy, can I speak from experience on that. My first home um, was in Fort Lauderdale after I got out of the military, and it was a brand new construction community, everything, and who doesn't like a brand new home? And I had no idea then I was young about location being a factor in real estate. And it even had a really nice man-made lake behind it. And right after the lake, there was a shopping plaza with a Publix. So, of course, during construction and all that, you don't notice any of these things until you actually move into the home. And boy, that very first night, it was a freaking nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) They were getting deliveries at 2 o'clock in the morning. And when that tailgate from the truck hit the concrete of the loading dock, it felt like the whole house was going to explode. It was absolutely terrible. So what other areas are undesirable for a home location? Well, you have homes in high crime areas or economically depressed areas, homes that are close to hazards like a landfill, nuclear power plant, swamp plant, etc. The bottom line here is if you currently have a home in an undesirable location like one of the ones that we've mentioned or if you will be subject to the economic obsolescence of the upcoming changes to US 41 here in Denellen, You need to understand that and make sure your real estate agent does as well. If you can sell that home before the situation gets worse, you will be saving yourself more loss uh, from your potential sale in the future. Okay, so that brings us back to the original question you asked at the beginning of the show. Suppose that you're buying a new home and you have a choice between two identical homes. One is located close to the center of the community and the other backs up to the potentially busy street. Which home should you buy? Well, I think it's obvious to everyone now, the house in the center of the subdivision will have greater value than the home. And that is the home that you should buy. Okay. So let me ask you another question, our listeners and you too, Chuck. What about a house that's in the middle of the block versus a house on a corner? Which would or should you buy? Well, now you're bringing up my first home. (laughs) (laughs) Do tell. I, uh... I bought my first home was on a corner and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so great because I only had one neighbor Mm -hmm. on one side. Uh, But you'll find really two, two parties here, people who love corners and people who hate corners. I hate a corner. (laughs) So, but I will say corner lots, you typically get a larger lot, which is why I think a lot of people like them. Yes. And you know what? The truth is, in an old-fashioned neighborhood with square blocks, a house in the middle of the block will have more value than that identical house on a corner. Right. Corner homes also have more traffic. And another thing that people don't consider is when you build a home on a corner and you happen to abut a major way or a busy roadway, whether it's a Highway 241, 121, or, or wherever you may live, when population growth demands that that road be redone and increased to um, have more traffic patterns upon it, more traffic flow, you're going to be eminent domain from both sides. Yeah. So you're going to lose not only property, and sure, you get compensated for it, but the compensation is nothing compared to the 
increased traffic pollution noise and your home sitting closer now to a main road than you would have thought. So that's another reason I've never really cared for a corner lot as far as me buying a home. Okay, well, I've got a question that may even stump you. Hmm. What about a single family home that's mixed into a community with, say, apartments and condos? Well, we don't see too many of those here. I know we see them a lot in South Florida, Orlando, major cities. But my personally, I would not buy it. And why is that? Well, a single family home in an area where there are mostly other single family homes will retain its value better than a similar home in an area where there are apartments, condominiums, or businesses. Not because apartments and condos are bad, but because a neighborhood is fairly homogenous. All the properties are similar to one another. So what have we learned here today on this show? Well, I hope they learned a lot, but all of the things That's being a lot of equal. Information. Yeah, it was. All of the things being equal, a home in a desirable location is more valuable than an identical or similar home in a less desirable location. So when deciding what you need in a home versus what you want in a home, sometimes it makes sense to settle for what you need in a desirable location. Providing real estate value is important to you, which it should be. That's all real estate agents mean when we tell you location, location, location. Location is important because it is the greatest determining factor in value. Well put, Anne-Marie. So if any of our listeners are thinking of selling your home, regardless of its location, just give us a call and we can tour your property and give you an honest assessment of value. And if your property is in an undesirable location, we have suggestions that will help you get it sold. Okay, and for those of you who have never seen our marketing, we ask you to please visit our website, BortzRealEstateTeam.com. We really are doing some phenomenal things for our customers. We are the only agents that do full video aerial and interior tours, not just still photography. We also provide eye-catching graphics and narration to give home buyers a true sense of the feeling of what it's like not only to live in your home, but its location, the community, and the area amenities. We sell the essence of your home and why you called it home, not just the four walls. Well, recently, we put a home in Yankee Town that was listed for over half a million dollars under contract in just 27 days. Yes. So we encourage you to take a look at that video tour of that property. Yes. Look at our marketing. Uh, we do it worldwide marketing with ads that uh, run digitally for the 21st century. Yeah, we run our ads for all our listings. First of all, in the top eight states that traditionally purchase homes in our areas on social media, and our content always finds the right buyers for our listings. That's not to say we don't advertise internationally or other places, but we know and we do focus advertising, and that's how we're able to get our sales so quickly and for the best price to the best buyer. We also want to let you know that our exposure is phenomenal in every way possible. We've reached the end of another episode. Oh, no. Please remember to visit our website at BortzRealEstateTeam.com and give us a call, 352-405-1663. Or? 1551. Right, that's 352-405-1663 or 352-405-1551. We will take care of all your real estate needs. Thank you for listening. Guys, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Until next time. Bye. You've just listened to the Bortz Real Estate Team podcast with your hosts, Chuck and Anne Marie. Subscribe to the podcast so you never miss another episode. Follow us on Instagram at the Bortz Team and follow us on Twitter at Bortz Real Estate. Be sure to visit BortzRealEstateTeam.com to join the conversation, read the blog, access the show notes, and reach out to us if you're interested in selling or buying a home in the greater Ocala and Denellum, Florida area. Until next time.